He who comes to me shall not hunger. Jesus told the crowd who had obviously come to him for the sake of bread, not to walk for food which perishes, but for the food which lasts forever. It was more like a conversation with the people. Jesus was actually leading them somewhere. He was leading them to the Holy Eucharist. First, Jesus began by explaining to them that the miracle they had just experienced, the feeding of the 5,000, was only a sign, a pointer to the fact that God is truly a provider, that He truly cares for His people, that He is willing to go to any extent to ensure that we get our needs, just as God he was willing to feed the Israelites with manna during their sojourning in the desert. Secondly, Jesus made them understand that there are different types of bread, the ethnic bread and the bread which comes down from heaven. While the earthly bread represents all that this world has to offer, the food, the money, the power, luxury, and so on and so on, all these things often lead to further hunger. The more you eat, the more you want to eat. The more money you get, the more you want to get. It is never enough. But there is bread which comes down from heaven, and that is the bread that truly satisfies. The bread which comes down from heaven is the bread that gives us life. All that this world has to offer is passing away. It is never enough. It never satisfies. Jesus says to the people, do not work for the food which perishes. Do not work simply for the bread which is passing away. In another passage, Jesus will tell us, Do not store up treasures for yourselves on earth, where moth and rot can destroy, where thieves can go in and break, break in and steal. Rather, Store up treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust cannot destroy, where no thief can go in there, break and steal. Do not work for the food which perishes, work for the food which endures to eternal life. And the people ask Jesus, We want this bread that comes from heaven. Give us this bread always. We don't want to eat the bread that leaves us hungry. We want the bread that is from heaven. Jesus then told them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. And he who believes in me shall never test. First, John chapter 6, verse 35. This statement of Jesus is quite heavy. First, it is a pointer to the Holy Eucharist. The body and the blood of Jesus Christ truly present on the altar under the appearance of bread and wine. When we eat the flesh, and drink the blood of Jesus in holy communion, we become candidates of heaven, where we shall no longer thirst or be hungry. Secondly, this statement of Jesus sheds great light on the earlier statement of Jesus. Very, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me. Not because you saw signs, 
For because you ate your fill of the loaves. John 6 26. The people came to Jesus seeking for bread. Now Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. I alone can satisfy the deepest longings of your heart. He who has me lacks nothing. To this day, many still come to Jesus simply to get their own share of bread. Not because they desire to build a relationship with Jesus. Christians today do not come to Jesus. Rather, they see Jesus as the stepping stone towards their real desires. If only we can value Jesus above everything else in this life, we will discover that to have Jesus is to have true satisfaction. We got Jesus seeking for gold, seeking for silver, seeking for the things of this world, the perishable things of this world, things that can never satisfy us. And Jesus is saying, I myself, I am the bread of life. He who truly comes to me will never hunger or thirst. So all these things that we are seeking for, we have, we have become idol worshippers. Christian idol worshippers. Let me explain. We are actually worshipping the, the gifts that God gives to us. We are no longer worshipping God. It is the gifts that we are expecting from God that have become, have become our gods. We don't want Jesus. We don't want a relationship with Jesus. We don't care about Jesus. All we care for is what Jesus will give to us. Dear friends in Christ, without Jesus, there is nothing in this world that will give us true satisfaction. Nothing. We will always want more. We will always want more. We will always complain. It will never be enough. There is always going to be one question mark of the other, one key leg of the other. You say, oh God, if you can just bless me with 1,000 naira, and God will eventually say, ah, my child, I love you so much. Take the 1,000 naira. Yeah, God, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the next one hour, you come back, God, this 1,000 naira is not enough for you. I just walked along the street and I saw my neighbor, he has 2,000 naira. Oh God, please give me another one. It is God you need. It is not what it is not what God wants to give to you that you need. When you have Jesus, you have peace of mind. I often hear people say, uh, peace of mind can never be bought with money. It's true. You can't buy peace of mind with money. Because even the rich also cry. <laughs> People who have people who have it, huh? they also the people who have so much, they don't have peace of mind. But I'm telling you today, if you have Jesus, you have peace of mind. Jesus said to the disciples, "Say peace be with you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give." Do you see that? What as the world give do I give? You see, the peace of the world is a peace that comes by having so much money, by solving all your problems. That is the peace of the world. But the peace that Jesus gives is a peace that enables you to find calmness even in the midst of the storm. Even when people are panicking up and down, you are calm. That is the peace that the world cannot give. That is the peace that money cannot buy. That is the peace that all the gold in this world 
cannot afford. All the glamour, all, all that the world can, all the power of the world, they cannot afford that peace that only Jesus can give. Only in Jesus can our heart find rest, says St. Augustine. On the flip side, when our relationship with Jesus suffers, everything else falls apart. We begin to look to the world to provide that which only Jesus can give. It is like ignoring a, a river and trying to drink from droplets of water that fall on a leaf. We all need to have a solid relationship with God to survive this world. We all need to start praying this prayer. Oh Lord, I don't want money. I just want you. Oh Lord, I don't want that fancy car, that fancy dress. I just want you in my life. Oh Lord, I don't want that big house. I just want to be able to create time and intimacy with you every day. Oh Lord, I want to be able to read my Bible and find that peace which all these cars and houses and all these things cannot give. That is the prayer that we should begin to pray. Without that solid relationship with God, these things of this world can never satisfy us. And more still, when our relationship with God is broken, when we don't have a relationship with God, everything else goes away. Everything else scatters. When we have that deep relationship with God, we don't really care how much is our bank account. We don't really care anymore for the, because we know that all these other things are passing away. When we have that relationship with God, we don't even care about our life. We don't even care. We are not trying to live long anymore because we have already attained the purpose of life. Why did God make you? Did God make you to become uh, a millionaire? Did God make you to own business? Did God, is that the reason why God made you? God made us to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him in this world and in the world to God. So once we come to that knowledge of God, once we love God, once we serve Him, and once we find happiness in God, it is complete. Stephen, the first matter, already attained this level. He could boldly, boldly challenge the Jewish authorities. He said, You stiff necked people and elders of the scribes, of circumcised heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your father did, so did you. He challenged them, spoke the truth to them. He did not mind that they were going to kill him. He was no longer concerned about his flesh. Because Stephen had found true peace. He had found that which the world cannot give. He had found his communion with God. And so he was martyred. But then we know. That Stephen is at peace. It is from the lips of Stephen. In fact, he was still speaking to them. He saw heaven. Stephen saw heaven right from heaven. He said, I can see, I can see the Son of Man sitting down on the throne of heaven. And he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Children of God, keep your relationship with Jesus alive. Keep your relationship with Jesus alive. Don't go searching for things that cannot satisfy you. Only in Jesus can you find true satisfaction. Find your spiritual life. Create time daily to be alone with God in prayer. 
have a daily routine of meditation, Bible study, and other spiritual activities. Never stop it. It is the energy that is more powerful than food. You know, when you are so close to God, when you have a solid relationship with God, no matter what you hear on the news, you are not disturbed, you are not moved. Because these days, if you don't have heart, eh, you cannot even listen to the news. Because the kind of information you hear is bad, bad, bad news. Bad news that you can even you can even have a potential. When you think you've heard the worst from Nigerian leaders and Nigerian authorities, then you hear another one. You hear another one. You hear injustice. When you see all this, when you see injustice, you see calamity, you see what people are going through. Difference in Christ. If you are looking to the news to give you peace, to give you uh, uh, satisfaction, you will be disappointed. Look up to Jesus. Let us grow our spiritual life. Because Jesus is the bread of life. And Jesus has told us, He who comes to me will never hunger. He who comes to me will never taste. Come to Jesus today. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. May God bless his words in our hearts. Amen. Travels of 5.8.